Welcome back to the Compound Podcast. This is episode 88. I did see the email today, and it is 88. I'm and it's waiting. presented, thank you, and it's presented by Parse Rum. I love Parse. You love Parse. We all love Parse. Anything nice you guys want to say about Parse today? If you would have brought some Parse to these negotiations, we might have a new CBA. That's a good point. If I would have <laughs> just slid some Parse across the table, I think we'd be in business. Are you there, like, in person? I'm in Dallas. We're all in Dallas. All the like team reps are. I don't know if all the team reps are here. Uh, I would assume we probably have more than 30. Like we have, there's probably 50 ish players. There's like at least one per team. Yes. Yes. At least one per team plus extras. Are any owners or like are Manford there? Manford's there too. Everybody's here. You know, who's not there is is Steve Cohen because he's just. Him and the Rangers GM are just signing everybody. Slanging. Just going on spending sprees. Yeah. She said, hey, here's the checkbook. Do what you got to do. The amount of signings in the last 48 hours, 72 hours is crazy. Do you I bet think, you it's even more the next two days. Do you it's think incredible? Do you think that this is kind of like a like a total product of where we are? Because it's a good narrative for owners to be spending right now, especially if things happen over the next couple of days. Like, it's a good oh, narrative. Yeah. Plus, you have, like, three, four, three. You have no spending last year. And then you have probably three years of really low spending. You had a lot of teams who mailed it in who are now starting to spend again. And you have this deadline, this artificial deadline that's kind of out there for teams to spend to so do you think it's a perfect storm of spending or do you think if we had a deadline every year that it would be like this i think it'd be like this every year if there's a deadline i mean you saw it last year there were guys like numerous like guys that p- could play every day in mlb going into spring training without a job and it's it was yeah. insane to see and then this year it's kind of like everyone rushing to get a deal done before this all unfolds the next couple days you guys should you should throw that until like when you guys are coming to agreement like oh yeah by the way we want a uh, deadline every year for free agency i i've thought about it and i haven't like i haven't had deep conversations about it but i've just thought about it and when you kind of think about it it's like what's the penalty on the back end like if you don't sign some like what happens i don't know how do they do it in the nba I don't think there's a deadline. I think it just opens up at a certain date and then everybody just plays with monopoly money because everybody signs for $500 million. I think it closes. But I feel like you you can't put a deadline because then like what if you're a free agent and then it seems like we want you. It's like, nope, sorry, you're screwed. Like I feel like if anything, this is against the players to have a deadline. I don't know how the deadline works because there is, in the NBA, there is like, there's only like a week for the signing. I'm pretty sure. I could see like a dead period. Like yeah. for this couple of like for this month, you like the month of February, you can't sign anyone or something like that. But it's like, I feel like you can't just all of a sudden shut it down and be like, oh, if you're not with a team like musical chairs, you lose. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's crazy. The amount of spending that's gone on. But you have the Rangers <laughs> doing some things, doing some exciting over things. 500 mil and three guys. Seeger and Simeon was a Seeger got. A lot of money paid. Like what, 315 or 325? 325. And then Simeon, good for him. Bet on yourself. He's here. He's hanging out. He had, he goes and, and has that one, goes on that one year deal, bets on himself, breaks, sets some records for second baseman and homers. Zach's going to break next year. And then goes out and gets himself paid. What a guy. Didn't they? Who else did they sign? John Gray from the right. um, Rockies. Uh, that's like right. Like five for 56 or something or 456. Yeah. Didn't he have like crazy good numbers like outside of Coors? He's good road numbers. I think yeah. so, yeah. He's, is I, that why? We faced him this year. He was, he was, we faced him that course. He was pretty nasty. Is Trevor Story not signed because <laughs> of Coors Field? It's a good question. Uh, like he, he maybe wants more money and then they're all using that against him. Well, I could see he's probably asking for Seeger money and teams are like, I'm not, I'm not saying like he's asking for 10 for 325, but maybe he's asking for like 250 and teams are like, mm, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. 
they're probably using cores against him. And then you also have like that, like the longevity of the shortstop position thing. That's a, that could be yeah. a toughie. I know he had, he had some uh, throwing troubles late in the year, but he's, he's so solid. Yeah. Oh, whoever, yeah. whoever gets him, especially if somebody gets him for less than they should, is going to have, it's going to be a steal. Somebody said that they think that he's the best athlete like in the big leagues, like top five. Dude, he swipes 20, sneaky swipes 20 bags. Says here. he can like 360 dunk, like windmill. Like that's. He's a very good baseball body. Oh, yeah. Good looking guy in a uniform. Yep, I agree. And you have him. So Story, Baez, and Correa are still out there. I saw it. Javi to the Tigers was a little bit of chatter. Go Tigers. You know? Which that'd be so weird. To, uh, that'd just and, be so weird. And that's weird. what I'm not knocking the city of Detroit or Javi, but I feel like Detroit's like a grinder city. And I feel like Javi's too flashy to come. Like, I feel like he's a New York or an LA guy or like a Chicago. Like, he's a big city type player. Like, that's just what he is, his style of play. Or Miami. Like, it would be weird to me to see him on the Tigers. Imagine Javi and the Cardinals. Yeah. With him and Arenado on the left side? That just gross. doesn't you – couldn't, you couldn't picture. But nothing would get through on the left side. That's true. Zach, how do you – what have the Go Tigers done but besides uh, the starting not, pitcher? Not anything. Not anything. They're hanging out. No. They're yeah, waiting they're for the out. deals. Waiting for the market. Up with a, they got their shorts up of the future. What else? Do you need? Yeah, I waiting wish. for the market to come to them. You got yeah. the the Marlins went out there and got uh, Garcia. He got yeah. a little, and they, got a little four for fifty something. And they just got um. They extended Stallings Alcantara. Too. I saw that they just traded. Yeah, extended Alcantara, which is a banana steal, by the way. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Bananas. I, but it it's one of those like. And I get like Ian, you know more about like what number you should try to get to like help your position. But like, imagine being him and offered that number. It's like thanks, like I'm set for life. Like you Good just point. gave me this much money, I'm set for life. And people are like, oh, why didn't you try and get this? It's like, I mean, what if I blow out next year and don't ever throw another baseball? Like, you look at his numbers. Both sides. He's been sneaky, really good. No, I know. That's why I'm saying he took a team friendly deal. If anything, yeah, he throws a billion. The twins extended Buxton, kind of a cool extension there. What yeah. didn't he he turn something down this year though, didn't he? I don't know. Tom knows. What I didn't get about Buxton's deal was he had a no trade clause. Like I didn't I don't know why he put no that trade in. clause is a great thing. Then you can buy a house, you can set up, you know that you're not gonna be moved. Like but no trade clauses get waived all the time. Like it comes yeah, down they, to they it in like played. three years, the Yankees want them, and it's like, all right, I'll waive it. But Adam Adam Jones had the ten and five rights and didn't waive it in Baltimore years ago, which was a sick move. Now he's winning Japanese World Championships. Correct. I don't know if he won actually. I just know he was playing in their uh, World Series. He had a walk off. Or pinch yeah, but hit, I don't, go ahead. Home I don't know if his team won the whole thing or not. Uh, Buxton did decline. This was reported by Ken Rosenthal of the Athletic on July twenty fifth that Buxton was unable to agree to extension at that point. So he did decline. But nobody knows what it was. Uh, they they reported at the time that it was around $70 million. Buxton wanted yeah. to be, They sort of met in the middle, but they couldn't agree on a deal at that point. Yes. I wonder what that the sounds, years were. That sounds very right. His, he had a cool little incentive package in there where, like, if he – because Buxton has so much upside. Like, if he plays a full season, and especially if he is as good as he was – this year, like he could go out there and be a top ten MVP dude every year, and he uh, he's got some upside in that contract if he does go out and get some some MVP votes. He's got Ooh. like eight million if he wins the MVP. Yeah, I did have two questions for you. Well, it's basically the same question. What happens with arbitration and the Rule Five draft with the new CBA and all that? Is all that just like delayed? It depends. So it depends what the league decides to do if they they don't have to i think this is a point that people need to know is they don't have to lock us out yeah they could just continue with no cba right they continue with the i think the current cba would be an extension it would just roll over uh and you would keep working on a deal um and so you know they can lock it 
out at any time, but they don't necessarily have to. So if there is a lockout, it will be an action by the league and the owners to say like, we're putting a stop to this. So you know, that doesn't have to happen. Um, but if there is a lockout, then everything will be just frozen. And so like all of those like nothing baseball. What's just the, yeah, yeah. What's the incentive to that though? Like why would they do that opposed to just saying, Hey, let's just roll it over in the oh meantime. Can you hear that? Yes. yes. It's FaceTime from Walker Bueller. Shout out. Cool guy. Want to, want to come on the pod? I'm a cool guy. Uh, so if they, what's the incentive to locking us out? It's, it's, I don't know exactly like what the incentive would be right now. I don't see like the upside of it. I think that it's more of like a power move. Power move. Or like, yeah, like we can do it. Like you feel like, especially like at this time, we would kind of want to negotiate through this and try like work really like if we can't come to an agreement that we would like just power through this and get to a point uh where we could find some common ground you know we'll see what happens it's and can they can they lock out whenever they like could they just continue on until like spring comes up just so like i mean like there's no point in locking us out in december and shutting down baseball operations in december like what's yeah. that you're just yeah. like I it's like until you come helps. until you come to an agreement i don't know what what was the uh the basketball one was into the season right that, that was the last one yeah that was like the end Major of the year sports. yeah yeah so it's it's uh it's kind of just until an agreement's made and that's it's kind of the crazy part but i think that players know kind of what we want and where we want to get to so it's that's that's part of it too it's just trying to figure out you know how we can get to that point um but it is it's uh everything's frozen and then you once an agreement's made then the dates get decided mutually and so you know arbitration some of that stuff could kind of happen pretty rapidly after an agreement is is done but and then they move the non they move the non tender date up right to they tomorrow. move the non tender date up so guys will know if they have a contract or not before that's before. what i oh, okay okay that's what, kind of what i meant by arbitration is like like obviously you could figure out the number later once the deal is signed but yeah the tender and non-tender i feel like you kind of like you going into a frozen like am i going to get a deal at the end of this or right. yeah so the tender date is tomorrow at like four o'clock and then the exchange date on actually arbitration numbers isn't until january 15th so okay. that's when you exchange numbers figure out and if you can't come to an agreement and you go to arbitration february that's when you go in and say i want a hundred million dollars for one season that's exactly it. And I want 25 million to Zach and Dakota each. Tom, you get 10. Ian gets the rest. 40. Fair? Everybody, everybody set? Everybody's happy. Good. Everybody's happy. <laughs> uh, can we talk about Scherzer's deal? Wait, 43 a year? Oh my God. Three years at 43 a year. At 37. Is that good? kind of just insane like that is I, in, so much money but i mean him paired with the ground like i get it but that's it's gonna be great for that i love that they're going all in escobar Marte, canna like in Steve the matter Cohen, of in the matter of seconds playing, is he just playing with fun coupons like he's just here you go who wants like that's they got they got money coming off the books, right? Degrom's out in two. Yeah, but he's he he's like one of the most team friendly deals too. Yeah, I was like, do you want him off the books? Degrom's coming off the books, the books, and then Alonzo's Alonzo's. I guess on the books. Yeah, on the books. Yeah. Yeah, like the books. <laughs> Let's look at those two deals. Uh, McCann's there. He signed a nice little deal, but that's like, I think that was four I, years. For four years. Fifty. Or I 60. saw a post. That said, Max Scherzer this next year will make yes, yep, more yep, than yep, like yep. two or three teams full salary, like their full team where their payroll is right now. Them. Like the right. Pirates and one other team, I think he like is making more next year than they are. Kind of crazy that their payrolls are under forty million. It is that is insane too. Like that's kind of absurdly low. I think we should be thinking about that. Like that's yeah, true. Come on. True. That's sad. 
goes both ways there on how yeah. uh, strange. Robbie Ray's with the Mariners. Gosman's with the Blue Jays. They got pretty similar deals after great years. I saw a tweet years. that said he took less the Blue Jays than what the Mets offered. That could be, I mean, that's just a report. You never know. But I did see something that said, like, the Mets offered him more. Hmm. And he said, I want to go to Toronto. He, the, 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 he took five for 110 from Toronto. So that means the Mets, I saw the same report. Suppose the Mets offered him at least 120 and he turned it down. Yeah. So. Was I that mean, after Scherzer? It was before they signed Scherzer, I believe. Yeah. Correct. And then they said, all right, you know what? Fuck it. Scherzer, we're making sure you come here. Take all the money. They said, we're going there. Like, going all the way. We're not losing another guy. That's basically what they said. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. And then what's going to happen tomorrow? You're going to have to think. It's how they think tomorrow, the tomorrow is going to be banana lands. I saw some KB rumors with Philly. Yep. I saw that. And Mariners. I saw we're in there, too. This is some exciting stuff. Baseball I think stuff. playing in Seattle would be sick. Sick. I have a question for you guys. Yes, sir. This report that came out on ESPN. Mm-hmm. All these reports on ESPN are funny because they, they report stuff that's going on in the CBA. And it's when you actually like or see what's being proposed, it's interesting to see what's being reported. And, and you're like, that's not true. Or like where it's coming from, because, you know, like there's two sides that are uh, that are offering. Are the reporters proposals. there, too, or no? Oh, they're. I haven't seen many of them, but I've heard that they're flying around, that they're they're around. Uh, but there was a, a playoff, a proposed playoff structure that was reported yep. by ESPN, a fourteen team playoff structure, where you would play, you would play best of three wild card, and then the top two teams would get a buy. And they get to pick. Somebody gets to pick their opponent. Yeah, that's a crazy, but. Just what? the just the fourteen team playoff. You get to pick your team. Yeah, you get to pick. You get to pick who you play, which is. Wouldn't tell you what though, that's some bulletin board material. Oh, they wanted us. That's what they oh, said. Did in that, didn't article. that happen this year? No, I thought the Yankees and Red Sox they decided or. There was there was a scenario in which if they all tied that they would have been. Oh, able to okay. Choose. So, get if you. Straight. If you have 30 teams and 14 of them make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. It's the NBA. Who cares about the first round of the NBA playoffs? I mean, I I will agree there is a point to where there's just too many teams and it's like, all right, like, like I mean, the NFL this year is up to 14. And it makes teams that shouldn't still be alive – still be alive like later in the year i guess you're still fighting for it but at the same time like there needs to be like i don't know i don't know how to say it you can't have a sub 500 team make no playoffs, like right? that yeah like but that's like in the nfl like there could be a team that's there's 17 games you're like eight and nine make the playoffs and it's yeah like, you know who that is that's the jets yikes like the lions technically I think yep. they are 0, 10 and 1 are not technically eliminated yet from the playoffs. Yep. Which is just ridiculous. Like what did what did we have in 2020? 12 team? Uh yeah, it was 12. They added one to each side. You're talking about baseball or football? Baseball. E- 12? 12. Because of three two. No. I like the best of three wild card game. I think best of three wild card is better than Play one I like that better too, because one game, like I get the one game, but in baseball, like, you you work. could have. I don't. I don't want to like name teams here. You could have a really bad team that, realistically, say the last game of the season, they could be sixty and one hundred and one, and they could face a team that's one hundred and one and sixty, and the starter on the sixty and one hundred and one team could go out there and throw a no hitter. That's just True. baseball. That was, baseball. That's what I was going to say before baseball is the one sport where it could be like, hey, that under 500 team could actually sweep whoever. Yeah, because it's you never know. Like the hot team, like any team can beat any team at literally – like whoever had the worst record last year, like I don't know if it was like the Orioles, probably at some point beat the Yankees. 100% yeah. beat the Yankees at some Definitely. point. Not that they were the best team, but – Tom? For reference. 
just to correct ourselves, there were 16 teams in the 2020 playoffs, eight from each uh, league. In baseball? Yeah. It's Hopefully. literally more than half. Eats. Are you sure? That sounds really familiar because I'm, yeah. Reading an, art- I'm reading an article from MLB.com. I mean, Ian, you were part of it. I know. You? It didn't feel like that. Yeah. It's like, didn't you play in it? It didn't feel like 16. Sad. I'm trying to remember. It's such a blur. 16. Holy shit. And we got beat. We won our division and got beat by the Marlins. Got swept. Yeah, you guys were the three seed that year. You played the six seed Marlins. And we got bounced. We got bounced. I don't understand. This is, I'm switching gears. How are college coaches switching schools when they still have games left on their schedule? I'm not you, a fan. Let's talk football. Real quick. Did you see Lincoln Riley's deal to USC? Yes, it was dude. something like they agreed to pay buy out both his houses for over five hundred thousand dollars of asking price. They bought him a six million dollar house in LA. They're paying him a hundred and ten million dollars. Like, but hey, I agree hey, with you. There's no, like, oh, there's no money in college sports though, man. They can't pay the guys. Okay, they're and they're him bringing hundred and ten million. Yes, they're over bringing how back, long? Thirty uh, years, ten years, I think. Doesn't Saban well, make like six million a year? No, Mel Tucker just got a 10-year, $95 million extension, 9.5 a year, and that was like top five highest. It's just tough because all of these huge schools have openings at the same time, so it's like – I mean, it's like the biggest – like LSU, USC, Notre Dame is now open because Brian Kelly from Notre Dame went to LSU. What's he going to make? At LSU, probably a lot. I saw something 15 a year. Shut the fuck up. Well, think of the donors and boosters. Like, like think of the grads that came from there that just probably – they probably have billionaires that went there. Just so excited to pay Brian Kelly's paycheck. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, you would – But I, you, you'd pay the Michigan State coach's paycheck. You love it. He I did. That's, that's what right. he was doing at Mel Tucker's house. That's exactly what I, he was, it was doing. He was, he was fluffing his pockets. He was Greasing giving, the wheels. I was getting him here. Yep. Saying, hey, hey, well, here's five bucks. And I was at the game this past Saturday, two and zero with me in the stadium this year. I'm just they not needed you. They needed you and one more. I'll tell you what though. What's before we get to Cincy? Because I know Ian wants to talk about Cincy. The fact that what hurts me and it hurts my soul is that if Michigan State would have beat Purdue, they'd be going to the Big Ten championship instead of Michigan because they beat Michigan, but they lost to Purdue. So they are instead going to probably be going to a New Year's Six Bowl, and I had to sit here and look at tweets of Michigan people. It was insanity, some of the tweets I saw. There was guys that used to play at Michigan tweeting like, oh, and have fun at the Idaho Potato Bowl at MSU football. Like, what the fuck are you tweeting at MSU football for? We didn't do it. Like, we beat you. I get it because they haven't won in 10 years or whatever, but like it really solidified Ohio State as big brother because yes. they stormed the field. It was a top, it was two top That's five teams playing each other. It was crazy. That's embarrassing. They were number five in the country. You don't storm the field as number five in the country. It's embarrassing. Couldn't be the Spartans. Couldn't be my Spartans storming the field. I'll probably get tagged in a tweet of storming the field at some point, but I don't care. <laughs> uh, but Cincy. I'm worried about him this Saturday against Houston. Uh, you know what? Since he, they got, they got something to prove this weekend. You know, they've been, they've been playing good football. They've been getting by. They looked really good for the first three quarters last week. They looked really good for four quarters the week before, but now they have a number 19 Houston team rolling in there to their home turf, trying to give them the business. And you know what? Since he's just, they're going to do what they do. They're going to play a good football game. Defense is going to be flying around. They're going to run some deep routes. And you know what? They're going to come out of there with a W, and they're going to head their asses to the college football playoff. Zach, how many minutes of Cincinnati football do you think Ian's watched this year? Three. Three minutes? Three minutes. I watch all the games. No, you no, don't. You don't. Yes, I do. I sit down on Saturdays. I sit, I'm laughing, but I sit down on Saturdays and watch these games because I don't. Ian, I this care. Is a big t- Ian, this is a huge test. And if you get this, I'm going to feel bad if you get this wrong because it's going to be embarrassing for you. What is their quarterback's name? Oh, no. Desmond Ritter. 
Oh, nice. All right. All right. Nice. Whew, wow, that was yeah. quick, too. Yes, it's good. I was going to say, I was like, you got to know this like that, or I'm going to think you looked that it just up. Mean, that just means Tom's a very quick texter. He got it to yeah. in really quick. Thanks, Tom. There, they look, they looked really good the last couple weeks. I don't know. It's going to, it is going to be a test. And there's no, if they win against number 19 Houston, there's no way the committee can keep them out. No way. They just have to, I feel like no matter what, they're just going to get compared to Notre Dame in the last, in the recent years. They beat Notre Dame. I, oh. Ian, Ian. Sorry. Hey. Because Notre Dame's, because Notre Dame's ranked fifth or whatever. No, no, no. I know. I'm just saying by, kind of not really being deserving and being in the playoff and then losing by 74 points. So in Notre Dame could potentially like play in the, you know, whatever it is, the peach bowl, or like if crazy stuff happens, they could get into a top four. They can get into the college football playoff. Brian Kelly can't leave before the college football playoff. Yeah. Well, like what do you, they're going to, if, if you know you're going to a different coach or a different school, why don't you just call the craziest plays of all time and just have a backyard football game? I don't care. Fuck it. I'm leaving. If Michigan loses in the if Michigan loses in the Big Ten championship and Alabama loses to Georgia because they're playing each other, right? Yes. yes. And they're both two lost teams, and Notre Dame's a one lost oh, team. Yeah. It'd be an absolute bloodbath for who gets in. And then Oklahoma State goes and loses to Baylor. Then it's literally just they might they honestly might put Ohio State back in at that point. It'd if Oklahoma a, State loses, it'd be a Michigan bloodbath. loses. Baylor beats Oakland. Like, I don't know. It could be mayhem. Do we think the Seahawks would win in the college football playoff? No, I don't. No. I'm don't think anybody can beat Georgia. I really don't. I'll be very surprised. Bearcats Hang only on. lost to him by a field goal last year. Just remember. I'm, I'm switching gears again, but I'm staying with the same sport. The Washington football team had a stat on third and ones this year. What do you think the percentage is that they've ran the ball? 18. Nope. I was just looking at the TV too. Fifty four. I would have looked so. Nope. Scared. One. One. Zero. Ninety nine. Nope. nope. Eighteen. Just which say the number. Which side of the scale is it? One hundred. Oh, oh, I was pretty close with ninety nine. One hundred percent of the time, and they just did it again here twice. They Holy. did well once on third and one, once on fourth and one. How? Like, I don't know. Load the box. I would say then, that I would say that in if you were gonna do like the baseball stats, so you'd be sitting on it. You'd be if you're the defense. At this point in the season, you got to know what's coming. I want to switch gears on your switch gears. Wow, Dakota mm-hmm. has something for us. I do. So one of my buddies, it's actually one of my buddies I played at Michigan State with Dan Durkin, his brother Tony Durkin. Does Dan also of- hate Michigan? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you go to Michigan State, you don't like Michigan. That's just how it works. Um, he's a part of this foundation called Wish Fest. It's spelled W E I S H Fest. Is that a last name? It is a last name. Um, it's it, they have an event this Friday in the Chicago area. It is actually at 115 Bourbon Street in Marionette Park. Illinois they have like this like big concert basically it's like a big party and they have Russell Dickerson and Randy Hauser and OAR who sings Wonderwall I believe no oh come on Um, dude what they sing love and memories I know that song by them so I redeemed myself there because I knew an obscure song by them let's go uh but they yeah so they have like a bunch of music going on it's basically just a big party and all the proceeds of it go to families with kids and young adults battling cancer so it's kind of a cool event go hang out drink a little bit spend some money watch some good music listen to some good music and help a good cause at the same time for tickets and info you go to wishfest.com wishfest w w e w e i s h fest.com and we're going to post this on it'll be on our stories today when you're listening our instagram stories and so it'll, it'll be on the Twitter. The there. It'll be on the Twitter too. Yes. And we'll post have a link the on the need. Twitter so that you can go to our Twitter and see this because it's and hard to remember how to spell and wish. Yes. And I'll tag them on the Instagram and Twitter because they have like accounts there too. Wishfest does. So hashtag I'll Wishfest. Tag them on it and you can go to their page and it'll have all the info and tickets and all that. I have an idea. And you should yes. put it 
on the TikTok along with the Twitter. I don't have one of those TikTok things that you, the kids are talking about these days. You know what I think we should do though is I think we should do a little. Uh, I think we should do a little hashtag wish fest. Let's see how many yes. hashtag wish fest so we can get out there. Make sure you spell it right because it's with an E. Yep. Hashtag wish fest. Hashtag parse rum. See yes, it is. It is this Friday, December third. I don't know if I said that part or not. December third, Friday. I'm getting my wisdom teeth out for a good cause. Oh, Ooh, goodness. It's a little personal thing that's happening in my life. In case you want to know me, Friday, wisdom teeth coming out. Look like a chipmunk. A little scared, a little nervous. Get them taken. Um, I actually only have three wisdom teeth. Let me tell you why. Because one spring training, I had a wisdom tooth that was growing out like and cutting a hole in my cheek. So I had to go to a dentist in Arizona and have him just like crowbarred out of my mouth. Yeah, what? that's a, that's a no for me, dog. Crazy. They just put me. They just yeah. laughing at me too. So I was. They were like in there, like, and I was just laughing at. They just popped it right out. Oh. So I only have three to get out on Friday, but it's gonna be a toughie. It's gonna be a real toughie. I'm coming back from Dallas Thursday night, Friday morning, first thing. I'm in the chair, going under, getting the wisdom teeth out. Gonna be loopy for the weekend. Dude, I said we. I said my, we do an episode on Saturday. My That'd experience wasn't that bad. Zach, have you had yeah, yours out? Thank you. No, mine are still on. No, mine was like they gave you, they gave me like Viking for it. I think I took like two and then I was like, I don't really need these anymore. You're a so big, tough guy. I mean, Zach, it didn't really hurt. Like, if you don't get dry sockets, it's fine. Zach, have you ever thought about getting yours out? Aren't you terrified that they're going to start hurting in like April and then you're going to have to go six months with them in? Cause I'm terrified of that. I, I yeah I don't know dude I I just think the dentist is the scariest place on the face of the earth. Do the, does the dentist tell you that you grind your teeth when you go in? No. You want to know what's wrong with me? Well, one, they did tell me I grinded my teeth. I used to have to sleep with a mouth guard. You you you, you grew no, out of it. I I no longer sleep with a mouth what guard. What the fuck? You didn't tell me this. We've been roommates for, for six years. You didn't tell me this because one day in spring training. In the hotel, I'm not going to say which hotel, I get back to the room at night. I open up my little case, put my mouth guard in, and there's like 10 fruit flies or like little like gnats on my mouth guard. Ooh. And I go, never again will this go in my mouth, and I throw it directly in the trash. Why don't you just get a new one? I haven't been in the dentist in six years. That's why. Yeah, it's not good. That's not That's not a good Legitimately thing, six years. Uh, it was in college at some point. The last time I was at college, uh, I think this is Dennis, like 2014, 2015. I think this is a pretty common thing among baseball players because the off is so short and you have to like get all of your, like the idea of taking a day and like planning the dentist and going to the dentist in the time that we have off is so unappealing. Is it covered in our medical? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Maybe, I, maybe I'll make it. Maybe I'll make a time. You have pretty good dental. But the, uh, I mean, I'm going to have a lot of cavities. I might, I don't know. It could get ugly in there. There might be it, a root canal. Who knows? It, had, it had been like two years for me and I went in and I really went to the dentist so that I could get a referral to go to the ortho orthodontist. Yes, but it's not actually the orthodontist because it was an oral surgeon. I was going to say orthodontist, but I guess it wasn't. It was an oral surgeon to get the wisdom tea though because i i had i always like spring training or whatever have a little bit of pain and then i'm like this is gonna be terrible i'm gonna be doing this the whole year and then i speaking of the orthodontist growing up i had everything you could imagine except a headset (laughs) (laughs) like the girl from finding nemo yes yes (laughs) yes yes dude i wish you had a headset oh my gosh i wish you had a headset bro i literally looked like spongebob in high school I mean, I never had braces. Can we get you a few never had pictures? Braces? No, I never had braces. Can we get a few pictures of that? No. Come on. Nope. Hashtag, hashtag, uh, hashtag wish fest, hashtag parse rum, hashtag Zach with a headset. With braces and retainer and the the little rubber bands that pull. I had mouth. those. I had those. I had bars. I had a thing called the palate expander in the top of my mouth. <laughs> Dude, what did your teeth look like before this? I told you, SpongeBob, bro. I literally was like this. That's what is that a wait, uh, walrus? Hey, I know Brady's in the room with you, Brady. I want you to find some of those pictures. Nope. He Tell said Tracy no. to send them to us. She will. No. I know she, she will. will. She will. She will. Please. She has my number, so she'll For send the them pod. To he said no. 
not in a weird way that she has my number, by the way. She has it in case Zach, I don't know, in case Zach something happens. In case Zach needs to get his uh, wisdom teeth taken out. In case I, in case she can't get a hold of Zach, she calls me because, you know, yep. we're just that close and that's special, man. That's special. I, have a, I have a theory about the dentist that they tell every single person that goes in there that they need, that they grind their teeth and they need a mouth guard oh, yeah. and they're getting a cut of the mouth guards. Hey, have you ever heard of a car mechanic? What do you yeah. think those guys do for a living? It's, it's the same thing. Like what? But what do you do? Go get a second opinion. Like, hey, hey man, your carburetor. Hey man, your carburetor needs to get fixed. Oh, what the fuck's a carburetor? You got it, buddy. That's fifteen hundred dollars. Sure thing. Right whatever it costs. Yep. Whatever it is, man. I'm like Steve Cohen when it comes to. That. I don't care what it is. Just take it. I don't care. Here. Oh, you're rich. Yeah, I oh, wish. you rich, rich. I wish. You can tell us. Oh no. Oh no, Ian, you're the rich one here, brother. We've seen we've seen your arbitration case. Yeah, it's like we actually know what you make, and you're making more than that this next year. Yep. So I'm expecting. Do we have a number a yet? Do we have a number? I'm yet? expecting a raise. We'll I don't see think what... you'll be talking about numbers. Yeah. On that. We'll see what the number is. We're not going to talk about it on air. Why not? Because we got to yeah. fight is, about it. We got to we, we, fight, hey. fight about the number. You're not hey, fighting anymore. Way? They're done fighting you. You won. Got fight again. You had over an 800 OPS. You hit 30 homers. You're I good. didn't have an 800 OPS. I wish I had an 800 OPS. 25 fucking homers. pumped. What'd you have? Like 760. Okay, you had Probably over average. league. You had over league average OPS. I had. I did have over league average, which was nice. So guess what? That means you're rich. 800 OPS. That's that's the goal every year. 800 plus. Ian. Ian, didn't you want to talk about Wade Davis? I did want to talk about Wade Davis. You know why I wouldn't talk hey, about Tom, Wade Davis? Hey, Tom, 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 Tom just sighed a huge sigh of relief right there. <laughs> I wanted to talk about Wade Davis. <laughs> we were rambling he, he there for a while. He texted me individually, which he doesn't do that often last oh, he Wednesday. Te- he, that's weird. He texted you. That's awesome. Just to, just to tell me that he wanted to talk about Wade Davis. So this has been like, we got to get it in here. Before we talk about Wade Davis, can, I, <laughs> can we just all remember that I texted you guys on Thanksgiving very wow. early? You did, and it was a very nice text too. I appreciate it. I don't that. want to talk about how nice of a text it was because it was very nice, but and it was sincere. But I just want to get that out there that I did send a text on Thanksgiving. Well, all I was, was all is a loose term. I, I didn't get. Oh, you know, uh, I actually thought about that too, and oh, I, I oh, god oh. damn it! So the people but I did, there, I did appreciate it. Yes, the people out there. That means we're right, Dakota. He didn't text all of us on Thanksgiving. It's true. Sorry, Tom. It's true. It's kind of Tom up. does. Tom literally does all of the work here and didn't have the decency to text. Neither did I, That's and I'm assuming point. neither did Dakota. <laughs> I was gonna say neither did any of us. <laughs> Fuck. But I did think about it. Tom, hey, it's because the posters aren't up yet. Anymore. But this is a two-way street. Did Tom text us? Nope. Sure did. Thank you for giving me all the sleepless nights <laughs> to put out on the compound. Tom, is Jake in the office? No, and it's like 11 o'clock at night. He's Thank God office. Jake's not in the office. Ian, I have to this text is him just back. like the let's get back to Arizona Fall League thing. Let's get back to Wade Davis. Let's Here get back go. to Wade Davis. Let's get back to Wade Davis. So Wade Davis retired. Yeah. Wade is an exceptional human, and I want to just take a minute to appreciate Wade's career. I believe he played for 13 years. Absolute stud with Kansas City. What he did with us in 17 was bananas and completely underappreciated. If you look back at that year he had with us in 17, it was magical. Uh, and then I think he had one really good year with the Rockies. If I remember Fun correctly. Fact, Wade Davis is born in West Vancouver, Canada. Hey. Hey. Wade, uh, he Wade set the market for relievers. He, I think he had like a, a – when he went to Colorado, I think that contract was kind of – but he's an absolute stud, great person, one of, if not the best, like individual, just like laser focused. I'm going to beat you with not only my stuff, but like how I pitch type of dude. Because he wasn't like a two pitch closer. Like he wasn't like a, he wasn't throwing a hundred. He wasn't like he had a pitch mix. He spotted up. He knew what he was trying to do. Really cool to talk to him about baseball. I loved him as a teammate. And I want to say very good things about Wade Davis. A I lot will. of people that I talk to, that play with them. Like everyone I've talked to that's played with them. So they loved them. Like I know Maples loved them. Great. I, I say, never met him, but I heard. I awesome. will say I'm not a fan of him because he threw a nasty cutter and I don't like cutters. They should be illegal. He did throw a nasty cutter. And uh, yep. there was, there was some 
times where you thought Wade, like, especially when he came off the mound, like might kill somebody. Like he was like, just like, not because he was crazy, but because he was the like, quiet crazy. You were like, he's not saying enough. He might be ready to murder someone. I think those guys are scarier than the loud ones. He tried to get me out. So the year after, this is a cool Wade Davis story. The year after, which was in. 18. 18. But this was in 19. So this was two years after. I faced Wade in spring training. Uh, and I was making all these swing changes, which ended up being horrible. But uh, I was making all these swing changes. So, so the Cubbies would think they that were. I, no, they weren't horrible because you here. met Dakota and me. It's a good point. It's a good point. Good things happen from it. Wouldn't have the compound without him. I faced Wade in spring training and he threw me a high heater because he thought he was going to get me out. And I rolled it over to second base, but I felt really good about like actually hitting it. Uh, and he texted me after the game and was like, man, swing looks good. Like I thought I'd be able to get you on that pitch. Like nice. And that was one of the most meaningful texts I've ever gotten from an opposing player. Even though my swing change ended up being horrible and a bad idea. That was cool. What if, what if I got a theory? What if he texted you that knowing it wasn't good? Just to fuck me. We might see this guy later. Good point. Keep it up, man. He was setting me up. He was setting me up. I've heard that before from people saying, like, they'll tell pitchers, like, hey, man, your curveball is fucking gross. Or he'll say to the catcher, like, what the fuck was that? That was the best pitch I've ever seen. So then later in that bat, he throws it again and he hits a homer. And he's laughing. That's 100% the, the opposite. Like, if he faced me, he'd be like, that shit sucked. I'm taking that 450 next time I face you. There was a few times this year. Like, I when looked- I threw you a backed up slider and you're like, well, it's effective because it was backed up. I'm like, well. It is. It's true. Man, I said that. It that was, is a, it was a real. good, bad pitch. Yeah. That's real. Is there is there anything else we should touch on before we do the uh- – uh, mm-hmm. Screen time brought to you by a wish fest hashtag wish fest hashtag parse yeah. with, e. with an E wish fest with an E with an E the Jets are going to have back to back first round picks this year because the Seahawks are doing great for them I don't know if you guys know this but um, we're presented by parse rum the best rum in the world it's actually been voted with the whatever the award is for like top rum in the world. Uh, that's the real thing. I don't know if you guys remember last year we did that Instagram thing where they were voting and all this stuff. Yes. But Parse Rum, it's an incredible rum and it plants trees to save the planet. Drink a bottle, save the planet. That's what Dakota always says. So, I mean, no big deal. But you're saving the world. Four hours, seven minutes for me. Three hours, 26 minutes. 524. <laughs> Stinks. <laughs> what a loser. Did you say three hours, six minutes? 326. I work today, so damn, that's pretty not my phone much. It's a grinder. Pretty low. I'd like to say that half of mine was again on the messages. That's amazing. Don't want to hear it. 33 minutes of mine was on Yahoo Mail. I think we're going to have uh, more to talk about next week, but because of all the things we had to talk about this week, didn't get Frank the Tank on. Frank the Tank will be on, though. Okay. Not like the way that Arietta, double not episode. Like, <laughs> <laughs> not like the way that Arietta was going to be on. More like the way that Frank's going to be on. I just there was too much to talk about this week. And well, next week could get kind of nutty too. We'll see. We'll get next him on. week could be nutty, but we'll we're gonna on. have him on. We're gonna have him on. We're gonna talk to Frank about uh, about his unbelievable season and his wonderful time at home in Jersey. Hashtag wish fest. Hashtag parse room. Hashtag Parsley Rum, hashtag Wish Fest. We'll put the stuff on our Twitter about Wish Fest with an E and our Instagram, Wish Fest with an E. And posters are coming soon. That's episode 88 of the Compound Podcast presented by Parsley Rum. See you next week. Rum. Rum. Rum.